Hi, I'm Vic and welcome to Geeko Farm, where we do things differently, like sausages. Oh, I'm going to make rabbit sausages. What's that dog? Rabbit? As I always say, first step, catch your rabbit. Done that earlier. Um, so now I'm going to take the rabbit and um, get all the meat off the bone. Uh, you carry on and do something else from them. Because, oh, do you like my automatic rabbit defleshing machine? Mm. Uh, because rabbit is uh, a rather lean meat, we're going to pop some bacon in there with it as well, and some dry herbs and dried garlic. You, you want things dry in sausages, and uh, you also want them extremely cold, so uh, once this is done we'll be sticking it in the fridge to chill off for a bit. So we got uh, hot paprika, sweet paprika, uh, some garlic powder, some onion powder, a bit of sage, and we'll chuck in some salt as well. Paprika adds a uh, nice red colour to it as well as some flavour and uh, while she's doing that I'm going to make myself useful and make some coffee. And the dog is not the only one who's keen on rabbit. We have uh, a little Brie over there tucking in. You like it Brie? Hmm? And little Lewis down there who has already totally pigged his. And you? What's that? You want some more? Yeah, there's none in my hand, and don't eat the fingers. Thank you. Box of bits for us, box of bits for the dog. So we'll plonk this in the fridge to chill off nicely for an hour or so. While they're complaining and the meat is chilling off, I'll introduce you to the rest of the hardware. Uh, the sausage skins, which I believe are lamb, and um, our mincer, which also stuffs the sausages, kind of. Well, the sausage skins, by the way, need to be soaked in water to get rid of all this uh, salt, which is used as a preservative. Otherwise, they'd be in guts. We'll go off real quick. The workhorse of the outfit is this KitchenAid, plus some attachments over there. Basically, this is a fairly standard mincer setup. You know, screw in there. Um, Cutting and mincing things, coarse grind and fine grind. Um, but when it's all done, you take out those bits and you stick that lot on the end, and your sausage skins go on there. And in theory, it drives the ground sausage meat out of that nozzle into the sausage casing. However, they provide this tool to push the meat into the top of the grinder with. Sorry about the noise. Notice these kind of uh, cool designy ridges there, which add rigidity to this while allowing them to get away with using as little plastic as possible. Unfortunately, what happens is when it goes in there, the meat, because this isn't a very good fit, squishes up around there and hides in here, uh, not going into your sausages, making the whole process very painful. So I have replaced that with the Mark One lump of wood. And uh, we'll see if that performs any better. And who should pop by but my mate Eddie, good friend of mine. Um, Eddie runs uh, Macchiato, they roast coffee in Masterton. And uh, <laughs> the self same coffee I was mentioning earlier by Curious Coincidence. Excellent. Uh, so we were thinking we might do a video. Yeah, it'd be good. Um, I started off uh, roasting coffee with a simple hot air gun and a wooden spoon and a steel bowl, so we might show you. How that's done, in case you're able to get some green coffee and do it yourself. Yeah, sounds like a Geeko farm hack. Absolutely. All right, we'll, we'll plan that one out. Excellent. The rabbit is chilling nicely in the fridge, much to the annoyance of the cats. So, let's put this thing together. Going to do it for a grinder. So, that goes in there. That chopper blade sits on top of it. Start off with a big wide mince and screw that on. Those bits of spare. Oh. We don't want to grind the meat um, with the fat to start with because the lumps of fat as they melt give you a sausage that kind of spongy texture. So we won't grind the bacon, we'll only grind the rabbit. 
So what he's trying to tell you is that this lump of wood is not very hygienic. Well, don't worry about that, because this is just a prototype of me making something else. All right, um, power it up. Maybe I should make this wet first, then the meat won't stick to it so much. all done. We'll put in the seasoning and the bacon and shove it all in the fridge to chill for a bit longer. Second verse, same as the first, but we use this uh, slightly smaller grinder blade. And while the meat's uh, cooling in the fridge, we'll find the other end of the wriggly intestines and we'll thread them onto this uh, funny looking ear trumpet. Um, and when you get to the end, you do not tie a knot to stop the sausage meat squirting out the other end of the gut. Uh, it, it won't. And what it will do is it will trap air in there and you end up with a bloody great air bubble in your sausage. So, uh, where have I done this before? I can't remember. Right, so if you uh, put too much sausage skin on your sausage skin holder, don't worry, you can take it off, rinse it, pack it in a jar of salt in the fridge uh, and it will keep until you want to do a next batch. What's happening over there? Bree? Bree, get down! After we were rudely interrupted, uh, if you want to learn about proper sausage making, go to the Scott Reed Project on YouTube. That guy has forgotten more about sausages than I will ever know in my lifetime. And we'll pop that bit back in the fridge again to chill it. Now if I was doing a classic British sausage, I'd put some rusk in it and you have to dampen the rusk before you put it in the sausage so uh, you have a nice slushy consistency to go through the machine. Uh, the rusk is basically dry bread. Again, have a look at the Scott Reed project. It shows you how to make proper sausage rusk. Uh, or you can just, uh, if you're on a keto thing, make up some keto bread from the packet if you must, otherwise have a look at our keto bread episode and um, dry it and grind it up. To turn this thing into a sausage extruder, so I'll add again with the other set. To turn this thing into a sausage extruder, we take away this uh, little um, grinder blade that uh, we had on the front. We remove little cruciform cutters from here. Uh, we put this retainer on to stop the uh, screw being pushed out through the nozzle and we shove our sausage skins on there like that and that's basically it in a messy kind of way. Here's our chilled meat and here is our pushy stick thing. You can see why that is going to work a lot better than all those ridges on there, can't you? And uh, this is where you need a tried and trusted friend to hold your sausage. Ready? Yep. Okay. So, pop some meat up there. And we got a, mustn't mustn't go past about five on this thing, isn't it? Ah. Got a bit off the end there? Yep. Uh. Oh, and by the uh, by the magic of interwebs, we are now done. And bun bun is converted into sausage. Now there will be a lot of meat in there left over, wrapped around the screw thread and everything. That won't be wasted. I'll turn that into some nice patties and we'll have that now, eh? Yep. So there are me uh, leftover sausage skins in a jar of salt there. We can go in the fridge a bit. I'd like to say this is the bit where I deftly twist these sausage skins into links. Yeah? Um, I wish. Anyway, so the trick is to, to sort of like nip them to squeeze the filling out. I learned all this from this Scott Reed chap, brilliant. I mentioned that. 
and twist them so we've got two of them. All right, and then we get the third one, squish that. Here we are. There's, there's three links. Oops, I'll, I'll slay that again. So we pull, uh, pull our links through there a little bit more. You, you need more than you think. Pinch it so that the stuff uh, is thin where you're twisting your, your sausage. Sounds rude, doesn't it? Like that. And then you, you pinch it there. You shove your sausage through. I haven't made a long enough link. Anyway. Yeah, a bit more than that. There we are. These are horribly onion. Pinch it. And then twist it like that. And we, you know, starting to see the familiar uh, load of sausages at the butchers that look so much better than mine. But these are made from local meat. And some of it is very, very local. All right, um, and it doesn't have any pepper in it, which is important for sus. Um, and it doesn't have carbohydrates in it, which is important for our keto diet. And there is a short but tasty chain of sausages. And for now, that's your lot down on Geeko Farm.